So in this episode, I want to explore the cases of Laurie Vallow and Chris Watts in terms of the mental competency. Um, Laurie Vallow is currently in a psych ward being mentally evaluated and she's been ruled incompetent to stand trial, but I think she's playing games. Um, I've covered a lot of crime cases on my channel. I've done Scott Peterson. Um, I've done Elizabeth Holmes. I've done the Barry Morphy case. All of these true crime cases to a to a lesser extent. I've done the Cabbage Petito case, but all to a lesser extent. The extensive true crime cases that I've covered extensively are the Vallow and the Watts case. And I actually think Laurie Vallow and Chris Watts are very similar characters um, for so many reasons. Um, their victims were children or included children, their own children. Um, they were white suburban um, people live, living middle class lives. Um, they were both attractive. They were both marketable to the media. I mean, I do believe part of the reason why both cases became popular in the media was because of the attracting attractiveness of the perpetrators. Um, even in the OJ Simpson case, um, you know, the victim was attractive, but OJ Simpson was also attractive. You know, he's an attractive, or at least not anymore, but at least back then he was an attractive man. OJ Simpson and Nicole Simpson were an attractive, wealthy couple. And I think that ha that plays a lot. I mean, if, if OJ Simpson hadn't been attractive himself and if his wife hadn't been attractive, I don't think it would have been as big as it became. So I do think the attractiveness of both Laurie Vallow and Chris Watts um, has made the, both these cases popular in whatever you know in whichever form online the watts case is far more of a phenomenon but the laurie vallo daybell case is very popular as well um and these were two parents that were considered to be good parents by many people in their family i mean chris watts was considered to be a great father devoted to his children um, and the same with Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow was touted as a devoted mother who put a lot of love, time and care in her children. And yet both of them are responsibility, uh, you know, are responsible of the demise of their own children. And to me, those type of people are the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low. And my question or well, my logic to all of this is, are Laurie Vallow and Chris Watts, are both of them mentally ill or mentally disturbed? My personal opinion is that both of them are mentally ill to an extent, but that doesn't make them insane. It doesn't mean that they're insane. Mental illness doesn't equa equate to insanity. I think they were both sane. I think they were both um, responsible for what happened. And I think they both knew exactly what they were doing. And I think they were both manipulative and conniving and very uh, cruel. Um, so I believe that they are responsible and should take responsibility for their actions but I do acknowledge that there is some me mental illness um, with both of them. I think there's definitely some mental illness there. I don't think any of them can be um, completely normal to do what they did, to take the extreme um, decisions that they did. None of them, I think, can be considered normal people. So essentially what I'm saying, just because I think they're both mentally ill to an extent, to a small degree, doesn't mean that they are insane. They knew the difference between right and wrong. And that's the difference. You can be mentally ill, but know the difference between right and wrong. I remember when I was speaking to my mum, don't speak to her anymore, but when I was, 
she said that she thought that Chris Watts had a mental breakdown and she was shocked that anyone could have thought that Shanann would have hurt her children. She thought that was almost laughable if it wasn't so tragic that anyone could have thought that Shanann would have harmed her children. Um, I personally believe that Chris Watts has been mentally ill for a very long time. And that would explain his antisocial behavior, his social awkwardness, um, his secrecy, the fact that he was always in the background while Shanann was the one really running the show. Um, I think there's always been something wrong with Chris Watts. What happened is that his affair exposed him. Um, and I'm not trying to say that Shanann was a perfect human being. That's not what I'm saying. But Shanann is not the murderer. She's not the killer. She's not the perpetrator. Um, I do think that there's been something wrong with Chris Watts from childhood, but his parents simply didn't detect it. They were so focused on his achievements, his academic achievements, the fact that he was always, um, you know, he always did what he was told to do. He was all, he never gave them any trouble. He was not rebellious. The fact that he was good at sports, all of those things covered up what was going on on the inside. I think that he was a very troubled person from very, very young. And his parents didn't detect it because they overlooked it um, because they focused on his outward achievements and that made them look good. I think with Lori Vallow, I think there's always been something wrong with that woman. And I think, you know, her multiple marriages, the fact that she's been married five times, that doesn't make you, uh, you know, that alone doesn't make you a bad person. You can marry 10 times. I mean, Elizabeth Taylor was married several times and it doesn't mean that she was disturbed in any way. But I think in this case, in the Lori Vallow case, when you look at it, you look at the full picture. I think there's definitely something fishy about her marriages, um, you know, her being married multiple times. And I think she was always a manipulator. And I think her behavior was overlooked because she was pleasant, because she was attractive. And I think that's what she used. She, she went on her attractiveness. It was her attractiveness and her ability to, ability to manipulate people that got her through life. I really believe that. If you take a look at the criminal case of Lori Vallow and Chris Watts, um, I would say that there's a great difference between the two. For me, the Lori Vallow Daybell case is a failed criminal case. Never got off the ground. She should be in prison or in jail. She's been allowed to stall the justice system and she's continuing to manipulate the justice system um, even though she has been charged with multiple murders she has not faced any punishment and I think her attractiveness and her ability to manipulate and her superficial charm is still allowing her to escape full justice with Chris Watts I believe personally that that is one of the most successful cases that I've ever come across a lot of people don't agree with me. A lot of people think there's, there, you know, there's multiple killers walking free. I think that Chris Watts is the sole killer. And I think the CBI were able to exploit his weaknesses. I think they were, they were able to manipulate him. Um, so he wasn't able to manipulate them and use his charm on them because they saw through his act. And I think he felt backed into a corner and that's why he confessed. Um, and I think that is far better to me that he's behind bars and he, you know, he, he takes the punishment for what he does for the rest of his life than dragging this all out, having him in a mental facility, not knowing when the trial is going to start uh, and 
having any possibility that he could get away with it. I don't think he would have gotten away with it. I think he would have absolutely been found guilty. You never know what a jury is going to do, but I do believe that he would have been found guilty because of just the evidence is just so overwhelming, particularly the fact that he buried his family where he worked as a field coordinator. But I believe that um, he thought that he could get away with it. And I think there's also emotional and psychological immaturity with Chris Watts as well. I think if he... I think he believed if he always showed the nice guy face. Um, I mean, if you look at this photograph, you see another side to him. This is not the guy that was smiling and laughing and giggling with his family at the dinner table. This is somebody that's very, very disturbed and looks at in this photograph, in my opinion. Um, the mask is off. Uh, and I think, I think that the Watts case is a success in the fact that the CBI were, were able to exploit his his um, his narcissism and his egotism and back him into a corner so he would confess. And now he's, you know, he's behind bars and there's nothing's going to change. I mean, he will never be released. Um, and so I think the Watts case is a success in the fact that they got the quick confession, they found the bodies, they got him put away never to harm anybody ever again. Uh, the question is, do I think that if Chris Watts was ever released, which is never going to happen, you know, if, do I think if he was ever released that he would murder again? There's a strong possibility that he would. I think he's a very, very disturbed individual. And I think, um, I think Lori Vallow is just a dangerous woman. And needs to be kept behind a jail cell or behind the prison cell or in a I, I don't think she should be in a mental health facility I think that's catering to her needs and catering to her manipulation I think she's a very dangerous woman I think she's possibly more dangerous than Chris Watts uh, I, I really do I, I do believe that if she was let out she would commit more crimes I think she's a very, I think she's possibly more dangerous than Chris Watts and even more manipulative than Chris Watts. And I think Chris Watts is basically as manipulative as you can get. But I think Lori Vallow is worse. I think, and I think that she looks very benign. You know, she looks very benign and that's what makes her more dangerous. She looks harmless and she's a woman. And her ability to manipulate is very, very high. I mean, She's fooling a lot of people right now, people who have degrees, licensed, uh, people who are experienced um, with people with mental illness. I think she's fooling a lot of them. And that is very, very frightening indeed. So I will also be doing, and I'll wait for the next chapter. So I will be covering the Delphi case, the case of um, Abby and Libby. Um, and I will also be covering the Orson and Orin West case that their adoptive or foster parents have been arrested, um, you know, over their murders. Um, I haven't been as interested in the Orson, um, hold on, let me just get their names. Orson West and Orin West. I haven't been that interested in this case because I simply didn't know what happened. Um, but now things seem to be moving along i'm a little bit more interested um and i've been interested in the delphi case for a very long time and i've been meaning to cover it on this channel just never got around to it but i'll be taking i'll be taking some um a deep dive into that case trying to figure out what happened i'm very frustrated that the perpetrator uh hasn't been found yet um, in in terms of the case of the missing boys or the deceased boys, I've, I've heard that they've been murdered, um, that the, the foster parents, I've always been suspicious about them. Uh, I've always thought that they were phony. You know, I was always, I always thought that there was something suspicious about their foster parents or their adoptive parents. So those are two cases that I'll be covering soon.